Hi, this is Roberta, Prisoners of Hope. Uh, I hope you're having a great day today. Um, I'm recording this on Thursday and it is cold where I live. It is very cold today in the 20s and windy. Um, so anyway, um, I had a few things I wanted to share. Um, so I'm going to say a prayer and then I'll start. Um, I'm on YouTube, R Roberta, Prisoners of Hope. And I don't have like this huge following, so <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be deleted off of YouTube, but in a way that's kind of good. So I can, you know, I can still be out there on that uh, platform. So um, as long as Lord leads me, right? So Lord, I just uh, pray right now you would take over this video, um, help me to only say what you want and help me to represent you well, because I am, one of your many ambassadors. And I, I always just want to represent you well, Lord. So I died on the cross. I just pray, speak through me, uh, live through me and say through me what you want to say on this video today. And may you and you alone always be glorified in Jesus mighty name. Okay. So what I, what I keep hearing is don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay. And I'm just going to read that scripture, Ephesians 4.30, which says, and do not grieve, which is, it's uh, Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay. So I just felt like the Lord wanted to, to put that out there. Um, in what I wrote, which I really believe was Holy Spirit inspired when, when this was coming to me, all the mudslinging in the church is grieving the Holy Spirit. Okay. All the accusing of false prophets is the enemy's scheme. This is what I was getting all the accusing of false prophets is the enemy's scheme to drive the true prophets back into the cave. Like, like it's too painful because usually true pro prophets are persecuted a lot. They go through a lot of wounding. And I got a short word at the end of this for the wounded warriors. Now it can be, you're not a prophet. Uh, you're not a prophet to the nations, but you get prophetic words and stuff like me, you know, like little nuggets and stuff to pass along to people. It is a prophetic gifting. It is to edify the body of Christ, but you go, you go through a lot. I mean, the devil makes you think you are like the lowest thing on the earth. He tries to take all your confidence away and drive you into that cave. Okay. So I'm going to share a little bit about that. Um, so that's what I felt, you know, like the enemy's trying to stop the voices from coming forth. Okay. Um, and what else did I put here? Da, da, da. Okay. Cause I only want to share what I highlighted cause I had a lot of stuff. There. Okay. I put instead of mudslinging, we need to lovingly co confront, gently restore. And I just want to go to Matthew 18 first, which is a scripture we all know. Um, but it needs to return to the body of Christ. Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained your brother. Meaning go to that person. If you think someone is a false prophet, you go to them. Go to them. Message them. Hey, can I talk to you? You know, whatever. Okay. It says, if he doesn't hear, then take with you a couple other people. You know, hey, I think you... you or a prophesy, you're a false prophet, okay? Um, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church, and then the church can decide, is this person a false prophet or not? But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. But this, this broad mudslinging, um, you know, oh, you, all you people missed it. You're false prophets. You know, why, why don't you, you know, step up to the plate and talk to people, you know? So, and it says, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. All right. No, we don't need to go there. Okay. And then, um, 
gently restore that's in galatians 6 1 and again i i heard that gently restore and i went and looked it up okay um in case you're wondering how i got there galatians 6 1 brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass okay now to me calling someone a false prophet is extremely you know you know it's kind of a strong thing to say okay um it, you you who are so spiritual <laughs> restore them um in a spirit of gentleness considering yourself lest you be tempted bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ this is a good one for if anyone thinks himself to be something which when he is nothing he deceives himself but eat, let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each will bear his own load. So we really got to go to people, um, you know, and even if it's someone we don't know, if we really, really think they're a false prophet and we really love, and this is part of my ministry, you love people enough to tell them the truth. And if people in the body of Christ really loved other people, they would have a conversation. Like, I really care about my brother and sister in Christ. I think they are falsely prophesying. I need to have a conversation with them. Okay, and then you take it out. And you know what? We all have to have a teachable spirit. Lord, help me to have a teachable spirit. Now, you know, I also, you know, you can also say you're wrong. I know what I heard and, you know, and I'm moving forward. So, but this is what the Bible says, okay? And I honestly don't see a lot of that happening. I really don't see a lot of that happening. And we need to return to what the Word of God says in handling things um, in the name of Jesus. And then I wrote, a general slamming of the voices in the body of Christ is causing damage. Okay, I'm going to read that again. A general slamming of the voices in the body of Christ is causing damage. Okay? See... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give people a tip. If anyone's restraining their voice, you got to remember, you died on the cross. This is what gets me through. I, I died. It's going to bounce over off of me like Superman. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? As long as God gives me something and I feel his leading to share it, I'm going to share it. Okay? And yes, people should test the spirits and see if it's of God. Okay? And I have no problem if someone confronts me and says, hey, you know what? I really think you're missing it. I think this is wrong, you know, instead of putting these broad statements out there, speak to the person and have that conversation, okay? So, so these general corrections that are out there, be specific and correct gently and lovingly those who need correction. Go before the Lord. Does this person lovingly need re uh, correction, you know? As long as you are in some form of relationship with them, knowing them in some form, you know, if you really love them and it's out of a place of love, that would be the right thing to do, that you love a, uh, that person enough to see their, their gift fine-tuned and used, um, you know, to its highest octane, okay? Um, all right, so I, set, I have Galatians again, 6, which we read that. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, um, verse 12, um, yeah, Galatians 6, we'll just finish reading that, um, verse 11, see with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand, as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. You are going to suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. If you're really standing for the truth and the light, you're going to suffer persecution. People are going to hate you. I remember I was at this conference, um, gosh, it was many years ago. Um, Mark Sharona was there, um, Mantle of Power Ministries, 
And um, I just had an encounter with God in the front of that church. And God said, you're going to speak the truth and people are going to hate you for it. So just be prepared. Just be prepared. Uh, but verse 14 says, uh, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that is the center of everything. By whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Wow. And I'm just going to uh, skip down to to uh, verse 18. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Okay, so let's let's boast in the in the cross of Jesus Christ in the midst of all these things. Keep the cross as the center, and then I put. This was interesting. I know this came from the Lord. The same censorship that's in the world has been in the church. Intimidating people from speaking fully and using their gifts fully. And honestly, you know, nothing against any leader. These are spirits that operate. I felt that almost my entire church walk. Just uh, being held back. Okay? Being held back. Um... And that's why, now that we have social media, this is why, guys, that everyone is releasing their voice. And, and they have a platform to, to say it, you know? So, um, but, in, you know, as believers, we have freedom of speech. What does it say? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, okay? And what does it say when you gather? One has a hymn, a, you know, a spiritual song, a psalm. Okay, what does that mean? Everyone's speaking. Everyone's sharing. Okay? All right? See what I mean? And during this COVID-19, the Lord really showed me. He set me free from a lot of stuff because I was beating myself up all the time. One thing, Isaiah 58, 1, which is, it's a, it's a great passage, but just this one part. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Okay, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. Um, so, so anyway, up the part he was speaking to me was lift your voice like a trumpet. And basically the Lord said, your, your whole walk with the Lord, you were silenced to a degree by a, a religious system and it's, and it's demons, it's demons, it's demonic, okay? But now God's shifting his church to be the church again. And you know what? We need a lot of voices. But yes, the voices do need mentoring. They need do need people to come alongside, okay? Um, so, oh, oh, and I put, there are many voices crying in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. And I also wrote here, Jeremiah and Isaiah, John the Baptist, they didn't get permission to speak from anyone but God. They were on the scene. John the Baptist, by the way, was New Testament, right? <laughs> he, they didn't ask a certain uh, permission, oh, you know, to, to give a word or whatever. Um, I actually asked, there's a few people who I'm close to, and one is a pastor, and one is uh, very good friends of mine who are missionaries. Um, if I ever say anything online that is, you know, please please hold me accountable. If I put anything out there, a post or anything that you don't think I should, please love me enough to tell me the truth. Okay. So, so, you know, and I'm in relationship with other people. I would hope they would say something to me if they felt something I was putting out was not right. Okay. Um, so let's see what else. Um, I put part of the problem is leaders need to be servants and mentor and raise up those under them. And, we have a lot of wounded warriors, you know? So, you know, honestly, the the bot, the, the leaders are supposed to uh, train people up and and um and then promote them and promote their their giftings and and so they excel and they go farther than than those who lead them, okay? So, um that's all I have to say about that. And I do pray, Lord, that you would help us uh that sharpen um, the prophetic voices, um, that the, the, the spirits behind the prophetic words would be tested. We pray for gentle correction in that in the body of Christ, that there would be love and enough love to love people enough 
to, to say, hey, I want to come alongside you. Hey, hey, you know, I want to help you with this gift. I want to pray that you excel in your gift. I want to pray, you know, you know, and help you with this. Um, or, you know, I think you really need to go before the Lord about what you're sharing. I think you're a little off base. Okay, so it's all right. It's okay. All right. Now, be prepared if you go to somebody that they might, you know, um, some prophets and prophetic people are very wounded because they've been rejected a lot. We've, we've all had that happen where we have a prophetic word and we go to the front of the church. It doesn't fit in. And you're sit, stand there shaking with the power of God on you, but it doesn't fit in. <laughs> Right? So there's people who are wounded. They just stop go, going up to give the word, you know, and that's not good. That's not good. Okay. So, all right. On, on January 23rd, this isn't long. It's very short. Um, in, the, in the Lord impressed to my heart, to those of you who have been going through intense trial, these are the wounded people. Um, attack, even taunting in the dead of night. Your hour of testing is almost over. You had to be refined and share in my sufferings to share in my glory. I've seen the rejection, the hatred, the name calling every tear you shed. But in the midst, you cried out to me and I heard heaven's rain is coming to wash away your pain. Many had to be called out and separated for the hour ahead. I heard you say, I want to be tried by fire. Take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I saw the surrender. I saw you give it all over living for me alone. That's the life I can now use because you died. I can now live through you. Okay, so, okay, remember, that's why we gently speak to people, because people have been going through a lot. People have been going through the refining fire for what, what's up ahead. And the last thing I will share on uh, January 24th, I heard these words, which I wrote down, get ready, church, the darkness that, that is about to be revealed is so deep and dark, people will be running to my light and my glory and my holiness. There will be deliverance in Mount Zion. And I had to look that up. That's Obadiah verse 17. And the other scripture, um, which honestly, I don't even remember how I got to that scripture. Um, Haggai, where is it here? Haggai, Haggai, Haggai. And I'm ending with this Haggai chapter two, six through nine. Uh, Actually, I'll start verse four. Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the long, land, be strong, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. So we need to be strong and work. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I'm shake, I will shake heaven and earth and the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they will come to the desire of the nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. So don't worry about money, says the Lord of hosts. I add that part in. <laughs> The glory of this latter temple will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I'm going to give you peace, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, so we thank you, Father. We thank you for your encouragement. We, we, we pray that the, the, the prophets stay out of the cave, that, that they realize that they died on that cross, that they just got to let stuff bounce off of them and continue to share what you give them, Father. And, and, and help us to remember, some, some just have a, like a prophetic gift. You know, they get little words and things to share. It, you know, they're not saying they're a voice to the nations. They're not saying that. You know, they're not saying they're this famous prophet. So we got to, you know, cut everyone a break here. Um, but at the same time, Father, help us um, to test, test the spirits to see if they be of God. But you say don't despise prophecy. So we're not going to start despising prophecy and throw it all out. Um, and, and help us to be kind and help us to really pray before we accuse and mudsling and slam people. I just pray for that in the name of Jesus, Father. I just pray for Holy Spirit conviction. Now, Lord, help us to know the difference because there will be, we know, in the end times of false unity. And we don't want to be a part of the apostate church. There will be an apostate church. 
that will join with, with Babylon. We're not that. At least I hope whoever's watching this is not part of that. We want the true unity of the remnant of God who, who is living at the foot of the cross through the cross in the shed blood of Jesus and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is everything. Um, and we don't shrink back. We are, we are as bold as a lion and we stand in faith in the spirit. We expose deeds of darkness. We don't hide. We're not, you know, cringing in fear. We're not saving our own rear end, but we're standing for Christ in a fallen sinful world. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. And I pray, encourage your people today, Lord, because you said there's going to be deliverance in Mount Zion. You said it. You're going to sh you're, everything's going to keep shaking, and they're going to come to you, the desire of all nations. And we ask for that former and latter reign together, Lord. We thank you, Abba Daddy. We thank you, Abba Daddy. And help us not to grieve you, Holy Spirit of God. Help us not to grieve you, but to be filled up with you, to be led by you, um, Lord place a guard on the door of our lips. The other scripture that was coming to me is where, where there are many words, sin is not absent. So help us, Lord, to to uh, really be careful, be careful of what we, we're saying about people and to love people enough to speak to them directly and have relationship. Another thing that's lacking, we have become ro ro robotic on social media. Lord, help us to have authentic, real relationships, God. And I bless everyone who will watch this to have the, exactly that in Jesus' name. Okay, God bless you guys. Uh, remember, we're prisoners of hope. We don't give up. We look up. We know where our help comes from. Okay, God bless. Have a great day. Bye.